Goodwill, more like ill will. On the surface, Goodwill seems like the friendly neighborhood thrift store focused on giving back to the community and fighting inequality. On paper, they're a nonprofit that isn't owned by anyone, which means no shareholders, no stock, and hopefully no anti consumer behavior. Their board of directors is actually filled with a bunch of volunteers, so theoretically, their only goal would be to give back to the community, which they do do in several ways. They have a bunch of career programs that help underprivileged people make some cash and learn new skills. They're also one of the only organizations out there that will hire people with disabilities aside from the government. They've also been around for quite some time, as Goodwill has been around for over 120 years, which means that they've donated tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions of dollars to charitable services. In fact, in 2018 alone, they pulled in $6.1 billion in revenue, out of which $5.27 billion was spent on charitable services. So they're doing a great job, right? Well, yes and no. There are definitely commendable portions of goodwill, and I don't want to take away from that. But there's also a lot of reprehensible portions as well. For one, goodwill isn't even all that charitable in the first place. Goodwill claims that 82% of the revenue goes towards programs and services for people in need. Some regions even have percentages as high as 90%. But this is largely misleading as this does not mean that 82% or 90% of the money that you spend at Goodwill actually goes to charity. In fact, there's evidence that as little as one eighth of their profit actually goes to the main programs that they advertise. Also, you know how Goodwill employs disabled people? Well, this may be more exploitative than generous. You see, there are special laws that allow organizations to pay disabled people as little as 22 to 41 cents per hour, which is already quite bad, but it doesn't stop there. Disabled employees also don't have the same protections that everyone else does, which makes them the perfect scapegoats to hand off dangerous tasks to. And when it comes to whistleblowers and employees fighting back, Goodwill may as well just be a private corporation, as that's how they behave. They usually threaten, fire, and publicly discredit people that fight back. So here's the truth about Goodwill, and why you should think twice before donating to or purchasing from Goodwill. Jumping straight into their donations, Goodwill claims that they spend between 80 and 90% of their revenue on charitable services, and technically speaking, this is probably accurate. As we touched on, in 2018, Goodwill pulled in $6.1 billion worth of revenue and donated $5.27 billion. So that falls right in line with about 86% of the revenue being donated, but this doesn't mean what you think it means. Any normal person would probably think that this means that for every dollar you spend at Goodwill, 86 cents gets donated. Or at least maybe for every dollar they profit, they donate 86 cents, but neither of these are true. The reality is that much of Goodwill's charitable spending isn't even funded by us, the customers. It's actually funded by various government organizations. Take Goodwill Omaha, for instance. They have a bunch of job training and assistance programs, but nearly all of these activities were funded by government grants and contracts. And you know their program to employ disabled people? Well, that was primarily funded by school districts. It turns out that out of the $4 million worth of profit generated by the region, only 557000 or a little more than an eighth was spent on these flagship job programs. And keep in mind, that's profit, not revenue. Only one eighth of the profit is being spent on these programs. So imagine how little of the consumer based revenue ends up at these programs. But then where are all these profits going instead? People are literally donating items for free, so surely Goodwill shouldn't have too many manufacturing or shipping or sourcing expenses. Well, the official destination is administrative overhead, but that's just a fancy term for large executive compensation. Goodwill actually has a history of paying executives super large salaries. In 2014, for example, they paid their CEO, Frank McGree, $933,000. This actually won him so much criticism and backlash that he would end up resigning, but things haven't exactly gotten better. 
His successors were paid a base salary of $434,000, and there are rumors that total compensation reached as high as $1.1 million. Though Goodwill does dispute the total compensation numbers. Either way though, executives and high-level managers are being paid multiple six figures. In fact, Change.org claims that the top managers at 150 Goodwill locations are being paid more than $30 million. Also, some of these people don't seem to have any issue charging a bunch of personal expenses onto corporate cards. Former CFO Tim Leigd, for example, charged over $75,000 worth of personal purchases onto a Goodwill corporate card. So yeah, that's where much of the profit is going. Also, for the record, I have no issue with people making a lot of money. If you want to make a lot of money, go to a private company or start your own business. Don't leech off of a nonprofit. Also, one more thing about these executives is that many of them are politicians by trade. The current CEO Steve Preston, for example, was the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under President George Bush. And the former CEO Jim Kibbins was part of the White House Council for Community Solutions under President Barack Obama, so take that for what you will. But it's not just your donations that Goodwill is exploiting, they're also exploiting the people who work there. One of the trademarks of Goodwill is providing jobs to underprivileged people, and especially people with disabilities. But once again, this isn't as great as it sounds. It's actually really bad. You see, Goodwill leverages an archaic rule found in the Fair Labor Standards Act, which was passed way back in 1938. Section 14C of the act basically allows companies to legally pay disabled workers wages that are lower than minimum wage. This has resulted in disabled people in Pennsylvania earning as little as 22 cents, 38 cents, and 41 cents per hour. Goodwill claims that these are outlier cases, and they're probably right about that. But just because the average disabled worker isn't making these absurdly low wages doesn't mean that they're making good wages either. Also, I wanted to point out that it's not just Goodwill that's exploiting these rules either. Basically, every organization that hires disabled workers other than the government leverages tactic. Disabled workers at Applebee's, for example, were making $3.97 to $5.96 per hour. And disabled workers at Barnes & Noble were making $3.80 to $4.85 per hour. So it's kind of an industry-wide problem, and it doesn't seem like it will be fixed anytime soon either. Goodwill has actually fought against proposals that suggest raising the minimum wage. Their reasoning is that they simply can't afford to pay employees anymore, which doesn't really make sense when you consider how much their executives make and how little actually gets donated. But not only does Goodwill pay disabled workers low wages, they also expect a lot of work. In fact, disabled workers are straight up tested for their effectiveness. Disabled employees have to take a time test to see how quickly they can sort and hang clothes. The ideal rate is 100 garments within 32 minutes, for most people, this is a pretty reasonable target. But if you're blind, for example, this becomes exponentially harder. And if you don't reach this target, your hourly wage gets deducted proportionately. This is how you end up with employees making ridiculously low wages. One blind Goodwill employee named Sheila Legland, for example, was already only making $3.99 per hour. But Goodwill wanted to reduce this to $2.75 an hour. Sheila would just end up quitting, but this is not a luxury that most disabled workers have, so they're just stuck making $2.75 an hour. Goodwill claims that they're not exploiting workers and that they're actually providing opportunity as 80% of disabled people in the US don't have any opportunity at all. But pity jobs that milk these people for the lowest wages possible isn't the same as truly uplifting and supporting the disabled community. As Alice put it, at least we gave them jobs is not a progressive, socially responsible move. If you didn't think that exploiting disabled workers was bad enough, well, it gets even worse as Goodwill has been linked with several workplace deaths. Goodwill's PR and legal team love to write off these deaths as tragic incidents that were not their fault. But when you take a look at the evidence, that story becomes a lot harder to believe. Take former Goodwill employee Dave Goody, for example. Dave only worked at Goodwill for a mere six months as a waste management driver, but let's just say that he went to hell and back during this short tenure. 
One day during his shift, he noticed that the trailer brakes weren't working when activated from the cab. So as a responsible driver, he would pull over, shut down the truck, and call management. He was hoping that Goodwill would send out a technician who could fix the issue. But instead, they just sent out another driver that was willing to drive the truck despite the issue. This was no doubt jarring for Dave, and he would of course go ahead and file complaints to Goodwill regarding this incident. But this was by no means the only safety hazard that he noticed. He also noticed a major safety hazard regarding Goodwill's trash compactors. He reported, quote, Based on my personal observations, most employees now operating compactors at each plant have not received the required training. He would go on to warn that this could result in injuries, deaths, and fines, which could all be completely avoided if proper training was implemented. But as fate would have it, Goodwill would take no action, and a 26-year-old employee named Abraham Garza would be killed by a trash compactor just a few weeks later. This would have been a good time for Goodwill to apologize to Dave for not taking his complaints more seriously. But instead, they would fire Dave and blame the incident on Abraham. Cal OSHA would eventually step in and fine Goodwill $106,000, but even after that, Goodwill would continue to maintain that they were not liable. If this was a one-off incident, they would have some plausible deniability, but Goodwill actually has a history of on-site injuries. In 2008, a 27-year-old was crushed to death by a trash compactor lift. In 2014, a 69-year-old was crushed by a forklift. And in 2017, a 54-year-old was killed by another forklift. And the worst part is that many of these deaths are amongst disabled workers. You see, employers aren't as liable for disabled workers because the disability may increase the chances of a workplace injury. So, Goodwill is literally incentivized to place disabled workers in dangerous jobs, and it seems like that is exactly what they're doing, leading to many disabled workers literally being killed. Those are just a few of the most notable issues at Goodwill, but they're by no means the only issues. For example, Another major critique against Goodwill is that they send clothes that they can't sell in Western countries to developing countries. And given that these were donated items, they can sell these clothes for super cheap, which screws up the local clothing industries. And the only reason that Goodwill is able to get away with so much is because they're a non-profit. If a for-profit company like Amazon was exploiting disabled workers by paying them ridiculously low wages and exposing them to significant workplace risk, they would be crucified by public opinion. But since Goodwill is a non-profit slash charity, these issues often get glossed over. Now again, this isn't to say that Goodwill is completely evil like Big Pharma or something. They do do some awesome things, but they've also got some major issues that have been ignored for way too long. And just maybe, if we bring enough attention to these issues, we can actually get them to change. But that's just what I think. Do you think goodwill is really goodwill or ill will? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you would like to see more videos exposing the dark side of such organizations. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.